Well, good morning, SaltStrong family. As you can see, I finally made it out early today. I made it out before the sun broke the horizon. Today is all about giving it 110%. Why do I say that? Well, because as you noticed, I shaved. Why? Because you dress for the job that you want. And number two, of course, you have to have the Wawa coffee. This is part of the success plan. Today, we are out here in a very popular area in Tampa Bay. And like I had mentioned in my pre-trip plan, this is an area where a lot of these fish get pressured and they can be pretty challenging to get to bite, especially uh, on a day where it's slick, calm out. Now, it helps me identify the fish, but if I can see the fish or I can sense the fish, chances are they can probably see it and sense me as well. So today's gonna be about stealth. It's gonna be about accurate casting. It's gonna be about putting in 110% effort. There's times that I go out and I fish just to have a good time, and there's times that I go out to crush it, to absolutely, hopefully, crush it. Um, and I, I think the difference is mindset. I, I was prepared last night. I got a good night's sleep. I had all my rods and reels tied up, my rigs ready to go for the day. I had my game plan of exactly where I wanted to fish at different parts of the tide. And uh, it's just about giving it your all. Today, I'm in an area that I know has fish. It's just gonna be whether I can get them to bite. Um, I've actually never fished out here in the springtime. I've only explored this area in fall, and I've done well at that time when the redfish starts schooling up, but I'm not sure what we're gonna find today. I uh, hopefully can find some tailors on the bottom part of this lower tide and maybe the beginning of the incoming tide as they move in shallow, but uh, I'm not gonna jinx it. We're gonna get out there and see if we can get some nice ones in the kayak for you. So I actually filmed that intro right after this clip right here. I missed a fish right there. I couldn't really tell what it was. Uh, the sun was still too low, but I didn't see any fish spook off. I didn't see any head wakes. So I had the suspicion that it was still nearby. Uh, I turned back around, pitched my paddle tail back into the area, and this fish charged it down. Oh my gosh, nice red. <laughs> I thought I saw somebody around here, super shallow. I saw a little fin, oh, he came up and hammered that. That was pretty cool. Let me uh, loosen off my drag a little bit. This guy was pretty tight. To oh, there goes another one right there. So it looks like there were a couple. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh man, he went underneath the rudder. I can't believe I didn't lose that fish. On my way over here, I saw a lot of little rain bait on the surface. And by rain bait, I mean like the fresh hatch of whatever the bait fish is here for the area, which is likely pilchards or scaled sardines. Um, little, little bait fish, two to four inches in length, were all over the surface. And uh, I just wanted to start out, I was really feeling like using the four inch diesel minnow today by Z-Man. Just just kind of wasn't sure if I should go super small or if I should go, you know, really big and go with a five inch. So I just kind of stuck with right smack dab in the middle and stuck with a four incher. And uh, sure enough, this guy popped it. Pretty close to the kayak too. No, don't go that way. It's a good fish. Yeah, there we go. Nice. All right, mission accomplished. And uh, sun hasn't even broken over the horizon yet. <laughs> that uh, good day so far. Very good day. I don't know of a more perfect sight than a upper slot redfish early in the morning. Gosh, beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay, let's get this guy back in the water. Got that tail. Oh, okay. He uh, he was ready to go. Oh, there he goes. Just took off. <laughs> All right, I have a lot of movement here in front of me. It's slick calm everywhere. Oh, actually, are those mullet or are those redfish? I got something over here, and then I got what I think is a school of something right there in front of me too. Um, we're in the fish for sure. I just need to get an idea of what direction they're going. Yep, that's a school of mullet for sure. Okay. I couldn't... Couldn't tell because they're actually in a little bit deeper water. So, you know, if I can get a full pedal stroke here, then I know that I'm in like a foot and a half to two feet of water right now. Um, oh, there we go. We're pretty spooked up with a good sized mullet. So that means the predators shouldn't be too far behind. There is nothing prettier than a sunrise and a bunch of tailing redfish. 
tell you what. See you guys, it can be tough. It can be tough to get them to bite when you're fishing shallow. These tailing redfish, they're getting down into the grass right now. They could be eating little marine worms, little shrimp. We got some seagrass here. Oh, that's a perfect tail out there. This is amazing. I think there might even be one right here. I'm just gonna wait, see if I see the tails pop up. Like, all right, I'll try, I'll try. No, spooked. Oh, they're so spooky. Try to get that guy right here. Nope. Man, very, very spooky fish. I, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go over to, let me just grab my paddle tail right here. I got one redfish on this earlier. It's just trying to get him on the prawn. Definitely still whip out the prawn, but for right now, I'm gonna get this paddle tail moving. Normally, when I find them like this, I'm a big fan of the shrimp, but oh, look at that guy right there. Oh, no way! First cast! First cast! <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, this is a good fish too. Really good fish. Right there, that made the difference. Oh man, I'm anchored up. He's gonna start spooking a whole bunch of these reds. Oh, <laughs> that is nuts. That's nuts. I got big fish moving back behind me. There's so many fish here on this flat. All right, just. Let me just take my time. I saw that fish eat. I was just bouncing on bottom. I, I don't know, maybe the prawn was just too big of a profile? It has to be, because I, I cast it. Oh my gosh, there he goes. That is what's up. That's a fisherman's paradise right there. Sunrise, screaming drags, big redfish everywhere. I can't complain. So I'm just thinking through that that hookup, you know, I mean that was the fr man the tail on this fish is just insane um, I was just trying to think through the hookup there and I switched over. Oh, they're still tailing right there You've got to be kidding me right now um, I switched over to a much smaller profile and uh, That made the difference. I think the prawns definitely still going to work um but it's so shallow and it's so calm that I think as soon as it lands, they kind of get on edge. So I went to this four inch diesel minnow, bounced it right in front of him and he didn't hesitate. He chased it down. Wow. Wow. Ah, oh, huge sigh of relief. Man, coming together. Let's take a look at this beauty. Oh, wow. Look at this guy right here, guys. Upper slot red, four inch diesel minnow, slam shady color. He didn't hesitate. This guy chased it down. <laughs> I had to give him a kiss. That's a beautiful fish right there. Note to all you guys out there, if you kiss a fish, um, don't kiss your wife for the day. <laughs> uh, let's let him go. Oh, big, big belly fish. Hold on, hold on. I know, you're tired. I'm gonna grab that tail. Just gonna take some time. No, I know you wanna go, but you fought for a little while. Okay, well, I guess you told me wrong. Ah, <sighs> and you know what? We've got more tails in front of us, guys. I think today is gonna be a pretty epic day. And I learned something really important on that fish. So, I think I'm gonna stick to weedless soft plastics and it isn't so much because I don't want to snag grass it's because I think that the soft plastics rigged weedless land a lot quieter on top of that I'm gonna downsize I'm gonna to go to three and four inch soft plastics this four inch diesel minnow has been working well for me I might try playing with a couple different lures um, 
but I think the key is to this soft, quiet landing. Even if I lead the fish by a good way, it's so calm out here that they hear everything. They, they feel and hear every splash, every little bit of movement. So the name of the game is gonna be Stealth. Um, I'm gonna kinda relook at my setups right now and see if I need to tie on some different plastics. I might go with a Power Prawn Junior rigged weedless. That's probably gonna be a good setup. And um, we're gonna get some more. <laughs> Even though the conditions were perfect for this day, I spooked more redfish than I care to admit. There has been a, a lot of editing in this video. Uh, I was really pulling my hair out. These guys were spooking from their own shadow. I just couldn't get them to bite. And then I thought, you know, they're tailing. They have to be feeding on marine worms or some sort of small crustacean. So I decided to whip the Power Prawn Jr. out there and just crawl it on bottom by these guys. Oh, about to say, oh, there we go. Look at all these guys that took off. Oh, I had to work it so slow on bottom. So slow. Oh, very, very spooky pressured fish, guys. And there goes a whole bunch of them right here. Oh, oh it's swimming towards me. Oh, oh. oh, that's a really upset red. Yes. There he goes. I'm trying to keep my fins in the ground so that I don't move and, oh my gosh. So what are we learning? We're learning that these fish may be tailing, they may be happy and feeding, but like I predicted, you gotta be extremely stealthy. Very, very slow bounces on bottom. Very small plastics, three to four inches, rigged weedless. These fish are pressured a lot by, by guides throughout the year on live bait and if you're going to get one on artificial you really got to take your time i love how i've kind of spooked off some fish but they haven't really moved far we still got a lot more down there <laughs> look at all these guys they're like jeff jeff what are you doing jeff he's like barry barry i got something in my mouth man it's not a real shrimp but you know what it looked like a real shrimp didn't it didn't it bud yeah that is definitely the biggest one of the day he's probably 30 30 incher Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Oh, well, he might even be bigger than that. Oh, jeez. Got a good one. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the power run does work. I just needed to drop back down to that junior. Smaller shrimp pattern made the difference. Talk about a textbook eat. 30 inch tailing redfish. We wanted that Power Prawn Junior rigged weedless. That super light, soft landing. These fish are tailing right now, likely feeding on shrimp and little marine worms. That's how you get it done right there. <laughs> Another kiss. <laughs> I love it, dude. Grab that tail. I know. Okay. There he goes. He's going to swim it off. I'll keep an eye on him, but he really wasn't out of the water for that long. Oh, guys, this is an epic redfish bite. It's a full moon tonight. I still see more milling out there. This is insane, insane, guys. I might just need to sit back and watch them for a little bit because I'm happy. I've gotten three quality redfish here in the boat. I can call it and go home right now, but there's so many. There's well over 100 fish out here. Um, I still see them tailing. We're going to try to get just a couple more, and then I'll probably call it an early day. This is truly a fisherman's paradise. It's calm. There's probably a dozen tailing redfish right here. Insane. It's getting pretty close to the bottom of low tide right now. And uh, I just wanted to stand up, stretch my legs. Maybe I'll see one here on the bottom on my way over to those that school of tails. Yeah, look at that. That's a pot of probably 10, 12 fish right there. And I've even got some more to the right that I'm gonna stay on the outside edge. Oh, guys, I can't think of better conditions to be completely honest. Clear water, shallow water, big tailing redfish. So many tails. All right, look at that guy. 
guys. Tell me you haven't seen a more beautiful sight. <laughs> There's a tail right there. Tail right here. Oh, didn't want it. Didn't want it. It's okay. It's okay. So for the next 45 minutes, I did what every fisherman wants to do and played target practice with tailing redfish that did not want to eat. So much fun. I did find those same fish down the flat about an hour later, but at this point the conditions had changed. I'm feeling a breeze picking up and the tide had switched to incoming. I thought it was going to be a trigger to turn these fish on, but it was quite the opposite. I, I learned pretty quickly that these fish just weren't willing to feed. I made a few last desperate casts and then I decided to turn around and head back to the ramp. All right, everybody, I've made it back here to the house. Kayaks all cleaned up, rods and reels are all sprayed down. I'm just having a breather and reminiscing on an awesome day on the water. That was the most amount of tailing redfish I've seen in easily five years. Just absolutely epic day, calm conditions. I'm super happy to share this video with you guys, but I'm actually not done. I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna film part three of this video. Yes, that's right. There is a lot more to this video than what you guys are seeing. For our insider members over at Salt Strong, we have private videos. We have two that you're not seeing yet. The first of which is a pre-trip game plan where we hop on a map, we show you guys where we're gonna go fish for the day, what lures we're gonna take out there, and all the conditions we're gonna be dealing with, wind direction, tides, water temperature, all the stuff that's important to analyze trends of the species we're targeting. Then we have the the second video, which is what you guys are seeing right now, the on the water footage of all the catch footage, the redfish and the trout and the snook caught, that's fine and dandy and it's cool to watch, but it doesn't so much teach you about where to find these guys and how to catch them, how to make those game time adjustments like I had to do today to get some of these fish to bite. And then the third video is this post trip analysis where I hop back on a map and I compare it to my pre trip game plan and talk about how did it go? Did my pre trip planning align with what actually happened on the water for the day? And what would I do different to be able to increase my chances of catching more fish and be more successful? We share all this information with our insider members over at saltstrong.com. If you guys want to learn more about that, you guys got to head over and come join us in our club. And if you're new to Salt Strong, we are the best inshore fishing club in America. We teach you how to find and catch all kinds of game fish. You save a ton of money on your tackle and you meet a bunch of awesome new friends. So if that's for you, head over to saltstrong.com and we will see you in the insider family soon.